Take your Bible, if you would. Turn to Galatians. Let's start there. Galatians. Do what? You don't have your glasses. Somebody give Betty your glasses. A magnifying glass. Somebody get her a magnifying glass. Galatians chapter, let's see here, Galatians chapter 3, <clears throat> I believe, Galatians, Ephesians, yeah, here we go. Now, this is going to take, a, I'm going to slow down, I'm not going to try to give all this presentation like I would if I was at a church somewhere like I did in Arkansas. There's a lot of information here and I want to try to get, I want to try to go through it in a manner in which you understand it. The folks that are watching online will understand it too. Um, <clears throat> let's read Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. O foolish Galatians. And he uses the word bewitched. Who hath bewitched you? that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. And now he used, again, he uses the word bewitched here. And I believe that is the correct word. I believe that somebody with a perverse spirit entered into that church and with that perverse spirit perverted the gospel that Paul preached to those people and in, in a way bewitched them with that perverse spirit to get them to believe something that is absolutely not true. The whole idea of Galatians is Paul had, Paul had gone up there and he had preached. And from what, from what uh, I was taught uh, in Bible college, there was more than one church in this area. It was like Paul did like a circuit there with these different, with these different churches, <clears throat> all of which that he had started. And he taught them the doctrine of grace. He taught them the doctrine of God's mercy God's grace, which was always free. He taught them the doctrine of faith, that by grace we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He starts the whole book out in chapter 1 with, if anybody brings you another gospel, let him be cursed. And I'm going to say it again. Though we or an angel from heaven which I believe is what's going to happen. That's why Paul said it. I believe an angel from heaven is going to appear and bring another gospel. It's already happened. Joseph Smith with the angel Moroni. Um, Ellen White with the angel that came and took her up to heaven and showed her that the fourth commandment must still be kept, which is uh, to honor the Sabbath day. In other words, they believe that you must go to church on the Sabbath day. You cannot go to church on any other day of the week. That God hates that. That's the mark of the beast and so on. She re and she received that from an angel who told her that. So it's already happened. Um, but anyway, Paul said, though we are an angel from heaven, teach you any other gospel than that which you have heard, let him be accursed. And so now he's saying uh, in Genesis 3, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth crucified among you. And now notice verse 2, because verse 2 goes with this always. This only would I learn from you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Did you receive the Holy Spirit of God in you 
by doing good deeds? Or was it the, the day that you believed that you were a lost sinner? You believed John 3, uh, John 3, 16, Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23, Romans 10, 9 and 10, 1 John, uh, 1 John uh, no, uh, chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, what else is in there? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. You believe those verses. You heard them. You believed them. You accepted them. The Holy Ghost brought you to salvation. And now you believe what God said. And God sealed your belief with that Holy Spirit of promise. And that's what he's saying here. Did you receive the Spirit by going to church on the Sabbath? Did you receive the Spirit by paying tithes? Or did you receive the Spirit by believing what God said in His Word? And that's the question. That's what He's talking about. So I'm going to explain to you here in a little bit exactly what constitutes witchcraft. And how we can recognize it in the church. What you see up on the screen here is... Uh, I used to read a lot of comic books. And um, some of these comic books were fairly cheap. I used to love to go to the flea market and or yard sales and buy old comic books. And in a lot of these comic books, there was this. This is a full page ad. Now, to take out a full-page ad in a comic book, you're spending a lot of money. Uh, and this one was for the magic power of witchcraft. It was for a book. It was advertising a book. And it was written by Gavin and Elaine Frost. They were, they were a couple, a married couple of witches that lived, I think, in the Springfield, Missouri area. And there, I read through this whole thing when I was young. I read this article. And I mean, it really turned me on. I wanted this book. Because, and now understand, I'm already going to church at this time. I'm being taught in Sunday school by good teachers. I'm coming into the house of God. I'm, I'm learning. Uh, by the way, I want to mention this um, to avoid what happened Wednesday night in the future. Parents, turn your child's tablets and phones off. Turn them off. Okay? Um, number one, that's what happened last Wednesday night was somebody's tablet automatically, or I wouldn't say automatically, but without knowing, they linked into the television and started playing a YouTube video up on the, t up on the screen, okay? Um, that's the first reason. Number two, the sanctuary of God is not for you to entertain your children in. Let them listen to the sermons too. You'd be surprised at what they're able to learn and pick up in the house of God. Okay? So anyway, and some of this stuff is specifically for children. Some of, the, some of what I'm going to put up on the screen, your kids are going to, they're going to know what it is. But anyway, here I am, a young person, 10, 11, 12 years old, and I want this book. And it says in, in certain places, so easy a child can do it. Well, that would have been me. And the only thing that kept me from ordering this book was that I knew my mother would probably get the mail before I did. She would open it up find a book on witchcraft sent to her son and then beat me to death with it. Okay, that's probably what she would have done. Because she did that with the Guinness Book of World Records. 
Yeah, my dad brought home a Guinness book. Back then, they weren't as big as they are now. And my mom said, I better not catch you reading that during church. Well, I did. I was sitting right over there, and me and my buddies were reading it during church. And mom said, I'm going to whip you with it when we get home. And when she first hit me, it didn't hurt. But I didn't want her to know that. So I went, ah! And she commenced to hit me with that book on across my backside. And I screamed and squalled and hollered. And she said, that didn't hurt. Don't try to tell me that hurt. She knew. But I, this, listen, this book, this advertisement, it, it had a draw on me. And I wanted it. I wanted it bad. But God was watching over me and I'm glad he did. Amen. Now, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. And, and I mentioned this just a few minutes ago. But understand what I'm about to show you. The difference between witchcraft and every other religion. And I've said this before. There are two religions in this world. There is Bible believing Christianity and there is witchcraft. Every other religion is a form of witchcraft. And I'll, take, I'll try to prove it. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now let me stop and explain something about witchcraft. The things that happen as a result of a witch's ritual do not just happen to you let's say that you wanted you're a witch and you want a million dollars well as a witch you never just stand around and wait for a million dollars to show up it is understood that if you want a large sum of money to come to you, you must perform a ritual in order to awaken the forces of the elements so that they will hopefully bring you the money that you desire. In other words, as Christians... If we need God to pay our bills, sometimes we don't even ask and God still gives us money to pay our bills. Amen? He does that for us without us even asking. That's how good He is to us. Now, it would be good to pray for those things. But sometimes, I mean, I cannot begin to tell you the number of blessings I have that I've never asked for. And I prefer that over gathering together a bunch of people and let's do this ritual. And let's say all the words right and so on and so on and so on. Verse 9, not of works. There it is. Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The good works and the good things that God wants you to do, He's already got your path laid out so that when you get to a certain point in life, you're going to do what God wants you to do. It's exactly how that works. And you don't have to invoke God. Um, in, in a lot of churches, they'll list for you in their bulletin the order of service. Part of the order of service includes what's called the prayer of invocation. Has anybody ever seen that? The invocation or the prayer of invocation. What it is, is that the minister will announce, now we will pray our prayer of invocation. And he's got a prayer book with several pre-written prayers. 
And he turns to a certain prayer and he reads this prayer to everybody. He's holding his hands out like this because you have to, I guess. And he says this prayer and somehow, some way, after he has read that prayer, God then must show up to that meeting. Now, does God have to just because they said those words? No. But that's what they believe. They believe that they can invoke, or I would say, provoke God into attending that meeting. God, you must come here because we said these words. That is witchcraft. It says that if you say these words, hands like this, then God must show up in attendance at your church and he'll be there, okay? Now, we uh, Galatians 5, turn there. Galatians 5, <clears throat> verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. How many of you know this to be true? That when your spirit, the spirit of God in, is in you, it will go to war against the desires of the flesh that you have. And I'm telling you, it's a serious battle. And the only way you can win that battle is if you have the spirit of God in dwelling in you if you do not have the spirit of God dwelling in you you will lose that battle every single time so he says in verse 18 but if you be led by the spirit you are not under the law now he's going to list the works of the law the works of the flesh are manifest which are these the first four that he gives deal with sexual sins adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness those four always tied together. Then the next group, he says, idolatry. What is idolatry? Very quickly, somebody give me a definition of idolatry. Rose? Huh? Okay, you can idolize a person. Okay. What else would it be? Any image, statue, we used to go to, um, there is a, um, uh, what do they call them, a passion play in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. I've been to it many times. And they have built a humongous, I'm going to say this thing's probably three, four hundred feet tall statue of Jesus holding his arms out like this. You can see the piercings in his hands and, sh and so on. We used to think that was the neat. Oh, that thing looks cool. That's, that is awesome, you know. Never really dawned on us. That was an idol. And people go and pray to this thing. And the same people who built... And who run that um, passion play, they, they've now died, but they left, they were, they were multimillionaires and they left a ton of money in a trust fund to keep running this passion play. And they have an art gallery that they used to call the Jesus Only Art Gallery. Well, when you went in there, it wasn't Jesus Only. They had uh, paintings of saint 
Mary, Saint Anne. Does anybody know who Saint Anne is? Huh? Saint Anne. Because, and I know this because I was behind two nuns that were pointing out all these statues. Oh, look, here's Saint Anne, the mother of, the mother of Mary. Saint Anne was, now where does that come from? Made it up. But you find out very quickly, it's not a Jesus only art gallery. It's a Jesus plus all these other saints kind of art gallery. And it's, it's kind of wacky a little bit. But anyway, they have idolatry and right next to it. Now, these are works of the flesh. Witchcraft. Right next to idolatry. Witchcraft. Now, why is this a work of the flesh? Remember, here I am. I'm 10, 11 years old. And this, I'm lusting after this book. I want this book. And I remember reading a magazine written for children my age called Dynamite Magazine. We used to get them from uh, uh, what, whatever book company that sells books in schools now. And um, there was an article in there about how to use the power of your mind to draw people to you. And JR, there was, I mentioned this morning uh, Dr. Adams, who used to pastor over here at First Baptist. He had a daughter that was my age named Becky, and I was in love with her, okay? And so this article said that if I fastened on her and focused on her long enough, she would eventually look right at me. So we were in kind of a, a free time in the school gymnasium. Gymnasium was a stage, and there was seats down here, and we were just goofing off. and. I just sat there staring at Becky Adams. And sure enough, after about 45 minutes, she looked right at me. And I'm going, it worked. That is amazing. But it was witchcraft made the promise to me that I could get what I wanted by using witchcraft. There are love spells that you can cast upon male or female that will draw them to you and get them to love you. Now none of this, none of this is actually real. There is no such thing as a magic spell that if I say these words, then this thing will happen because the forces of the universe will bring it to me. What's going on is, is that I'm doing a work of the flesh and devils are responding to that and they are putting it into the mind of some poor victim of mine to, to be drawn to me and I have successfully use witchcraft to bring this girl to me so that she can fall in love with me. That's, that's what I would have been taught had I gotten this book and read it. Okay? So you have adultery, fornication, uh, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft is number six. To me that's interesting. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, so on and so on and so on. So it's mentioned in the New Testament as being wicked. It's a work of the flesh. And those who do the works of the flesh are going to be judged. They are going to be, they are contrary to the Spirit of God. And they're contrary to the nine fruits of the Spirit. They're contrary. They're against those things. Now, Deuteronomy 18. God had the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and all of those people in, the, in Canaan land. And God was going to drive them out. He was going to use Israel to drive them out. 
And the reason why he did not want them there is that number one, for the most part, we know they were giants. Number two, those giants and those people practiced witchcraft in its various forms. So God said, Deuteronomy 18, 9, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. And that's what God was doing by giving me a mom that cared what her son learned. And that's really the only thing that kept me from ordering that book was I knew that I had a mother that cared and that book would have never made it into my hands once it got into her hands. I'd have to be playing this game like, Mom, I'll go get the mail for you every day. Mom, I'll get the mail for you all the day. You never have to get up anymore. I will go get the mail. My mom knew me long enough because I was just like her and she would have said, what are you up to? So God said in verse 10, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination. What is divination? Anybody know? Huh? It is. It is trying to receive information from something besides the five senses that God has given us. Sight, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touch. Those are the five senses. So divination is a method of receiving information not imparted to us by at least one of our five senses. In other words, uh, we could read it in the newspaper or we could hear it on the radio. Um, if you're blind, you use your fingers to read Braille, so on and so on. But in this case, you're receiving the information, it's bypassing those five senses, and it's entering into your thoughts without those five senses. That's what divination is, okay? Um, or an observer of times, what is that? An observ observer of times. It's what some church people are. Well, it's about time to cut it out, isn't it? About time to quit preaching, isn't it? Do what? Astrology. There you go. Well, the moon's in Sagittarius tonight. That must mean such and such. Or, I'm a Gemini. Geminis do well getting married to uh, Tauruses the bull, but they don't do well marrying Virgos. I just made that up. I have no idea. But that's what they use. The position of the sun, the moon, and the stars on any given night. They want to know what your birth date was. They know whether you're a Gemini, you're a this. You're, I, I keep saying Gemini because I'm a Gemini. They keep using all of those as if the stars and their movements had one thing to do with your life. They don't. They don't. They just move around up there. But that's what they have been led to believe. God said, do not worship nor serve them. And to me, that's what he's telling you what the meaning of the word worship is. Worship is when you believe that these stars have told you something and you do what those stars tell you to do. 
observers of times. Um, an enchanter, someone who knows how to reach the gods or reach the spirits by incantations and they are almost always repeated over and over and over. And what did Jesus say? Do not be the, don't be, do the way of the heathen. For they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. But that's not true. Um, enchanter or a witch or a charmer. Someone who believes they can control spirits, especially animal spirits. A consulter with familiar spirits. I'm working on right now, I, I just started it yesterday, I'm working on right now a study on familiar spirits. Okay? And I'm going to put a lot of work into it uh, and show you exactly what familiar spirits are. Or a wizard or a necromancer. Necromancer deals with the dead. Okay? So the word witch, the word wizard, and the word wicca all derive from the same word, which is in your Bible, it is the word wist. And Jesus used that word when, jo when Joseph and Mary finally found Jesus after they had, you know, left the, the Jerusalem and Jesus is 12 years old. They can't find him. They go back to the temple. There he is. And he's answering questions from these aged men. And they're just like startled at, at his answers. And they just can't believe that there's a boy this smart who is teaching them. And they go in there and say, you know, Jesus, what are you doing? And Jesus said, Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? So the word wist means no. So Wicca, witchcraft, and wizard all come from the word wist, which is basically where we get the word wisdom from. Wisdom, and it, it basically is you have divine teachings in you that came from the gods. You have secret knowledge in you to where you can reach the gods, you can reach uh, and make contact with the stars, the heavenly luminaries. You have knowledge that surpasses anything that man knows. That's what a witch, a wizard, um, or a Wiccan is, a vizier, V-I-Z, I, I didn't say brazier, a vizier. Someone who has the ability to see things that nobody else sees and so on. And now God says, um, verse 12, For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt... Let me, let me stop here for a minute and I'll give you, uh, tell you a story. Something happened when I was a teenager in this church. There was a man by the name of Carl, and I, I just, I loved being with this man. He was, he was so funny. He was a clown. Everything he did was funny. He supposedly started coming to this church through a, a man in the church that was also in construction. Carl was in construction. And him and his wife and two daughters, they started coming to this church and I remember we had a Christmas play on the stage that year and um, Carl played Herod the king and buddy, he played it, man. He played it. it. It was just hilarious to watch. And I thought this guy was the coolest guy in the world. And I, and I really liked him. Carl was making comments to some of the people that also went to this church that he did construction with 
that he was performing what he called transcendental meditation. Now, believe it or not, at the time, I knew what that was. And I'm, I'm like 16, 17 years old. But he was practicing, him and his wife both were practicing transcendental meditation. And he believed that through practicing, even though he's going to this church, he still has and carried with him this occult knowledge. And he believed that one of these days he was going to become a god. So he then started telling people that he was so good at meditation, he could levitate. Now that is, that has been done before. That those who go into such a deep trance it's not them lifting their bodies up. It's the spirits that are with them that are literally lifting their bodies up off the floor. And Carl believed that he had such power that he could levitate off the ground. Preacher Golf went to visit him, got involved. And he basically said, Carl, we love you, but you're gonna have to decide which religion you're gonna participate in because you cannot participate in both. And what I won't let you do is bring those ideas into this church through the back door. In other words, try to teach them to my people that are here behind my back. I won't let that happen. And him and his wife, they left the church. Choose you this day whom, whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So, that's why God said, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. And what God did was God drove him out of our church. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God for these nations, which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered, which means allowed, hath not suffered thee so to do. God is saying, I will not let you practice these things and still be called my people. Now, here's, here's how I know that UFOs are 100% of the devil. It's because so many people have learned how to meditate in just the right way to call down these lights from the heavens. Now, surely a race as advanced as they are could figure out that we speak to one another with radio waves. And we go, breaker, breaker, one, nine. This is Big Youngin. That was my dad's handle. It's the big young in here calling to any interplanetary craft that might be out there in the sky. 
There's a Smokey the Bear at mile marker 118. I wouldn't go any faster than the speed of sound if I were you. Over. But you see, you can't contact them that way. They're contacted in a way that God said thousands of years ago to do not do these things. That's what tells me that these people, these entities are under the control of Satan because they can be contacted exactly that way. Okay, and God said, don't do it. <clears throat> we'll get into that uh, next Sunday night. These are all books written by uh, the same woman, most of them. And she writes books. Her name is Silver Ravenwolf. She writes books primarily for uh, women in their 20s and teenagers between the ages of like 14 to 18 years old. I see as she wants to teach your daughters and your son how to practice witchcraft. And believe it or not, there are young ladies and young men who sit in Sunday school classes all over this country who are learning witchcraft. And they sit in Sunday school. And they're learning it because nobody in their Sunday school is telling them that these things are wrong. That's why they're doing it. Let's stand to our feet. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> <clears throat> Father, we ask for your blessings tonight upon your word. Father, help us, dear God, as watchmen to watch for our neighbors, our friends, our family. And Father, we know, God, that the people we love, they are going to be confronted with this and there's no way to stop it. And the best of parents can try to hide this from their children. But Lord, the devil will always find a way. Father, teach us how to train our children to not want to do this. Help us, dear God, to train them on what to do, what to say when encountered with someone doing witchcraft. Father, just help your people tonight and bless your holy word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.